La Felipa Alunite Quarry lies 800 meters east of the Cinto Caldera mining area. It is situated towards the edge of the alteration system, which is clearly visible on the alteration color composite. Within the quarry wall we can see some light colored veins. These veins are filled with a late stage supergene alunite that cross cuts all the other structures and textures in the area. This target consists of two objects that are distinctly visible in the imagery. The southern target is square in shape, which implies that it may be man-made. Its magenta color in the alteration color composite indicates that it is rich in alteration minerals. The northern object is square as well. While the alteration color composite contains inconclusive colors, the dark colors in the false color composite reveal immediately that we are dealing with a water basin. These objects are situated just northwest of the Sinto mine. The southern object is tailings from a heap leach operation where cyanide rich fluids were pumped through the tailing material to leach out and recover fine gold particles. Operation stopped around 1990. The northern object is an irrigation pond used for farming and is not related to the mineralization or the mining operation. This object near the town of Rodokilar shows very distinct cellular patterns on the hyperspectral imagery. The alteration color composite reveals that the centers of the cells are rich in alteration minerals and appear in shades of magenta, while the separation walls in between are rich in clay material and show up in green. Two cells located between the concentric rings and the road show up in brighter magenta color. These patches are mainly consisting of alteration minerals and lack vegetation cover. The pink area partially covered by the arrow is tailing material that has been eroded from the tailing dam and can now be followed downstream from the bright tailing site towards the east for more than a kilometer. The red area southeast of the rings is a naturally occurring exposure of alteration minerals. From this elevated overview point you can clearly see the partitions in the tailing the floor of the cells consists of tailing material, while the material of the separation walls was brought in to avoid erosion and gully forming in the tailing site. A mine site restoration program, which includes a botanical garden and experiments with different plant species, is ongoing and the plant cover further prevents erosion. Two control plots, which appear in bright magenta colors in the image, have been left in the original state. Lack of vegetation cover and dividing walls have led to formation of gullies and exposed the fine layering of the tailing material. This object lies just at the edge of the high map scene. It lies along the access road to the Sinto mining area. While the object itself is not very visible, the road shows up clearly in the image, although in this map it is partially covered by the vector layer of the road. Here you see the access road looking east. On both sides of the road cut, strongly altered volcanic rocks are exposed. The entire outcrop has been altered to white, powdery alteration minerals which are cut by several generations of ochre-colored veins. 
The white matrix mainly consists of kaolinite and alunite, while the veinlets are of mixed jarosite and alunite composition. The coloring of the veins comes from the jarosite, which is a secondary iron-bearing sulfate mineral. This object is also conspicuous on both maps. In the alteration color composite, it shows up as a homogeneously greenish-yellow line with a characteristic loop in it. Here you can see the object from a distance. It is apparent that this object on the image is of a man-made origin. The road cut of the main access road to the mine loops around a small hill and creates this curved line on the image. This object lies in an area northeast of the Rodakilar Valley. In a false color composite, it looks very similar to other areas. In the alteration color composite, however, it is distinctly different from neighboring areas. Our object appears in blue, while surrounding areas show red, magenta and yellow colors, all of which are usually associated with the alteration mineralogy. If we look in detail, we can see that the contact between them is medium sharp with a certain amount of mixing. We can also see a faint banding or bedding in the blue object, just southeast of the circle. The object is a cap of reef limestones that were deposited after the alteration took place and on top of the volcanic units. Some bedding is visible and the contact between the two units is a sharp erosional contact. In the image, the contact appears less sharp since limestone boulders fall downhill and mix with the volcanic rocks in the gullies. This object lies just east of the main road in the Rodakilar Valley floor. The object has bluish-green colors in the alteration color composite and may be wrongly interpreted as unaltered rocks. At a closer look, we can see its square shape and partitions in between, which indicate a man-made origin. The false color composite shows hints of red color, which is a sign for vegetation. In the field, the object looks like this. It consists of crop fields with small separations in between. In our alteration color composite, an increase in vegetation cover can sometimes appear similar to an area of reduced alteration grade. A near-infrared false color composite should be consulted as well to avoid such an interpretation error. Today you have gained an overview on the epithermal alteration system at Rodakilar. You've seen the use of the handheld computer with GPS in navigating to target locations and the different methods of acquiring data with the field spectrometer. We have also linked features in the image to, the, to how they actually look in the field. This concludes our field demonstration movie on the validation of spectral features. I hope you enjoyed it.